So I'm going to be going over how to use sensors in your LabVIEW robot project and how to use them to, you can read data from them and then you can use that data in your code. So let's just look at an example of how to read one first. So you have a limit switch. So I'm going to be using the code from the WPI robotics library. Um, this has a sensors folder with a few different options in it. Um, so let's just look at the switch and then you would initialize it wherever you're initializing everything else. Uh, we're in begin.vi right now. And then uh, just give it a ref num. And then you can use this uh, wherever you want. You can get the ref num wherever you want to use the data from the sensor. So I'm going to be doing it in just right here. So everything's in one place, but you would normally be doing it in a different file uh, where you wanted to get the data from. So this one has a few different options. You can get limit value. That's what we're going to do since I chose uh, limit switch and then just wire that in. You can see here, this is basically the output that the sensor should be giving you. Um, now you also have to provide the channel, uh, which will depend uh, based on uh, which sensor you're using. But for this, it's a DIO channel for the input of the sensor, um, uh, which particular one you're using. Uh, I don't have anything wired up right now, so I'm just going to leave that empty, but you would need to do that to specify where which sensor you're getting the input from. So this is the output. Uh, as you can see, it's just one value, uh, whether the switch is pressed or not. And so then you could take this value and say you wanted to do something uh, when the switch was pressed, then you would just use this as a Boolean value. So uh, whether it's true or false, um, and then you could use that in your code. So let's look at another example. Um, you can have third party ones as well. So this is a color sensor. Um, and then you would just initialize it here again, same process. This one has uh, uh, more options in it uh, that you can use. And it also has some configuration options. So uh, you would give it the refnum name, and then you would also provide the input where you're getting the sensor from, and then get the refnum uh, wherever else, wherever you wanted to get the data from the sensor. So um, it's that's pretty much a very similar process for each different one. And then you have uh, some of these different options here. Get colors. So uh, this one will just take a refnum, and then uh, you can. Um, check the normalized color or the color on this VI. And you can just look at each different uh, VI here and then see what the options are. So raw color, or you can get um, match color and competence um, based on a measured color. And so you can do a few different things with this. Um, so this one, uh, yeah, you, it also has some configuration options here. Um, this one has a bit more options than others, and that'll just depend on which type you're using. And then let's say you have like an IMU or an inertial measurement unit, um, which they typically have like six or nine degrees of freedom. So an accelerometer and a gyroscope um, bundled into one. And then you also have a magnetometer sometimes and a few other values. So I have a library for that here. It's an ADI IMU. So you would just initialize that again and then um, set the ref num. Let's say you already had it all initialized and then you had the ref num. Um, then this one, you could use like read.vi and they'll generally be called like read or get something if you're looking for the data. And there's a few other ones here, like if you needed to recalibrate it, you could do that. Um, all of those options just vary on uh, what sensor code you're using and what library. So. This one here has a few more options in it. You see like what the options are depending on what you want to get. And then again, you would be doing this in a file where you actually wanted to read the data from it. And then you use that data in your code. You wouldn't be doing it in this uh, in uh, begin.vi or that sort of thing. So let's say you just wanted like the accelerometer value in the X direction. So you could just unbundle that and then um, feed it into here. And then you could get the uh, X, Y, and Z value. So then this would just be the individual values. Uh, this might be for, OK, yeah, this is accelerometer. Um, so you could just use these values um, however you wanted to use them. And you can see there's a few different options here. So you have like temperature and a few other things. Um, but yeah, so that's the process for reading data from sensors. 
it's uh, generally pretty similar, um, but it'll vary slightly depending on what library you're using and uh, what types of sensors you're using. But yeah, that's pretty much it.